Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome in to another episode of Cook with Kate. Woohoo! Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do today, guys, why don't we uh, pick through the lentils and measure those out what we're gonna want cooked. And then going into the lentils, like I said, we're gonna do the leeks. We'll do a little bit of the poultry pork broth. I think I'll keep the garlic part of the dish for the mushrooms because garlic and mushrooms just go so good together. I'll see if we have some thyme outside still, the herb. I don't know if it's still growing or not, but I'll check because I feel like that would be really nice in the lentils. And then maybe just a bit of parsley. Okay, so our carrot, we can prep after that. And like I said, they're going to roast. And then obviously while all of that is going, we'll just have the carrots and the mushrooms roasting in the oven. And that way we don't have too much on the stove top to try and watch. Okay, carrot, mushroom, garlic <laughs> is where that's gonna come into play for sure. And then our sauce, so our beurre blanc sauce. Okay, so obviously we will need our vin, shallot, wine, and then I always like to flavor it with lemon if it's gonna go with fish, which it typically always does anyways. Vinegar, shallot, wine, lemon, and then lastly, our butter. And then obviously at the bottom, we'll just do our salmon, lastly. And yeah, like I said, I haven't really thought about how we wanna season it up yet. So if you guys have any suggestions, feel free to post them up in chat. Okay, obviously after all of those things, then we'll do the cake. And then while the cake is baking, then we can marinate the chicken. Done and done.
come up. This is on a low, low heat still, and it's still simmering pretty aggressively. But we wanna keep like most of that moisture in, which is why I still have the lid like on it and not just propped off. Salmon's going on skin side down. Yeah, you can see how that little piece of wood's just like puffing up that smoke. I'm gonna do it this way, I think. Now let's close that up. There's our top here, just to regulate the heat. I wanna keep it around 350 Fahrenheit. Beautiful, coming back up to 325F. Oh yeah, that's a happy, happy fire, guys. I think we'll just, uh, Leave that closed for now while we focus on the rest of the dish inside. We're almost at the 10 minute mark on the carrots, guys. Okay, quick little test on our lentils again. Definitely look like they are soaking up the liquids. Okay, I'm gonna turn that up to medium. They have a little bit of crunch still, but really good flavor so far. Give you guys a little peek how they're looking right now. So no color really on them yet. I'm just going to turn the tray around. So back to front. I'm gonna do eight minutes from now. Oh, I hear it popping. The skin likes to pop. Okay, it's actually cooking really, really nice. I think we're safe to uh, get some mushrooms on, guys. Watch our flare up. So let's go pretty quick. The longer we leave the grill open, the more risk of flare-up we'll have. Try and not let them fall through the grill grate. My fave, it's crisping up. Load up this grill, might as well. Okay, close it back up. I'm just gonna put the mushrooms back into that same bowl. Maybe uh, about 10 minutes. Should give you more of a view. Nice. Oh yeah, getting some color on the mushies. And this guy is like almost ready to flip, I think. Couple more minutes. We are very close though. Okay, what I'm gonna do is get the mushrooms off of the grill first. Smells so good and garlicky too. I'm gonna put those few up there. So no stickage on the bottom for sure, I would say. And when you go to flip, if it feels like it's stuck, it's not ready to flip. So yeah, I basically just like burn or crisp up this skin. Put that plate on the mushrooms. Keep them warm. Okay, those can go into the bowl now too. Now, gently come back under our piece here. Quick little loosen up. There we go, guys. Complete. And now we let that guy rest out. Okay, the liquid's cooking out of there nicely. Just wanna try a lentil. Very close. Very, very close to being done. Turn those back down to low, I think, and just let them keep cooking the liquid out like that. I think we're safe to turn on our saucepan for the beurre blanc. Here we go, friends. So medium high heat with that. So we are just cooking down the vinegar with the shallots. We have a couple tablespoons of white wine vinegar in the pot with some fine diced shallot. We're gonna cook it till it's almost all evaporated, and then we're gonna hit it with a bit of white wine. Okay, just a touch of wine. And then all we're gonna do, we have our cold butter here. We're just gonna slowly drop in butter cubes. We'll start with that. About 30 seconds till we add a bit more butter. Okay, now that's back on low. 
And then we kind of go on and off the heat with that pot now. So the important thing about this beurre blanc sauce, guys, is we just don't want it to get too hot because then it could split, which means our emulsification will no longer be. We'll have melted butter floating on top of uh, wine and shallots. So see how that is like one fluid mixture? There we go. That's a better view. And I'm just going to turn that burner off. We can use the residual heat. Drop in a little bit more. Keep swirling. If it looks like the butter doesn't want to melt in, put it back on our burner. Take it off. Keep swirling. And that is really it. And then we're just going to finish with a bit of lemon. Back on the heat for the last little bit. See how we're still one smooth fluid sauce here, guys? And I love the color too. It's like this pastel yellow. And then the sauce consistency we're always looking for, guys, is just enough to coat the back of a spoon. Because you know if it coats the back of a spoon, it'll coat whatever you're putting it on top of as well. Mmm, perfect. It's really not acidic at all anymore. Just a little bit of lemon juice and zest, like a teaspoon. And then it also needs just a bit of salt to balance out the fat. Swirl that in. Perfect. Okay, into our lentils. Fine chopped parsley and thyme. Nice fresh herb flavor. Turn that off. We have added salt a bit at the start when we were cooking them with the leeks. Maybe one more pinch is all we need. That's really good. Yeah, nice. Oh, yeah. Carrots with roasted garlic. Now that is some caramelization. Our beautiful beurre blanc white butter sauce. Our nice rested fish. Yeah, see how the juice is kind of dispersed as we let it sit there. And then our garlicky grilled shrooms. What a plate. Okay, I'm just gonna scoop from over there. We ran out of room. So filling. Okay, next thing going on the plate is our carrots and mushrooms. Garlic roasted carrots, garlic grilled mushrooms. Hi, Sammy. We got Sammy, he's right on time. Oh gosh, our carrots are running. I didn't grab a new blade, no. It's okay. That was our perfect amount of cedar. Okay, I've never had mushrooms that taste like that before, but that's really good. We got the Sammy Men. Gonna do that. A bit more underneath, I think. Okay, salmon is next on the plate, and I think I'm just gonna peel off. There's this little piece here where they cut the bone out. Those sneaky fishermen. Oh. That is like seriously perfect. Just peel the skin off. It's like pre-portioned almost. Yeah, even that side is so juicy still, but like that, to me, that's like a perfect medium cook. Just gonna take off some of the protein spots. It's like my least favorite thing about cooking salmon. Gonna pop that right there. It's a bit a uh, bit runnier than I typically like my beurre blanc, but the flavor was on point, so I'm okay with that. And I kind of like the way that it's just like running off of the salmon. 
And the shallots went like so nice and sweet as well, being cooked with the vinegar and the wine. I think the only thing I'm gonna do is a dribble of olive oil just around. So you can keep everything contained, all those juices together. And well, maybe since we have parsley in the lentils, maybe we should put a little bit of parsley around the plate. Okay, there's my garnishes. Red sorrel, so this stuff's like kind of sour. I love it with salmon too. Just like break up those leaves. So we don't want a ton of that one. The color is so good though. And then to match the flavor in the lentils, a few little nice pieces of parsley. Done. I love the way that turned out. So that's how I would plate it to you guys. I just don't like how that sauce looks there. Thank you, friends. Yeah, thanks for all the support today, guys. Sammy made it on time for lunch too. The juices, it's moist. The salmon, <laughs> Annie. Hey. We got a little bit of cedar flavor on there, guys. I think I just need to put a bit more salt on that for myself. I thought it just needed a touch of salt. Let me try one more. It just melts in your mouth. But you can see. Like that color, the darkened color of the outside of the salmon, that's from the cedar. Just that little chunk of wood we put in there. I'm getting in the mushies next. I think these definitely soaked up more flavor from the cedar than the fish did though. Seriously, I hate to say this, but I think I like the mushroom better than the fish. What? I'm shocked. You have to try that right now, Sam. Right now? Right now, just try a mushroom. It's really, really good. The lentils turned out really nice. Definite like meaty pork flavor. So that's going good with all of our like root vegetables, the meatiness of the mushrooms, right? Yep, that did it. That did it. Because if we look, it came away from the edges in those two minutes. So that is perfect to me. Oh, I do have a skewer. Perfect. Okay, I'm going to use just this metal skewer that I have. If you have a wooden one, that works as well. And we're just supposed to poke holes all over the cake. Obviously, don't like tear the cake apart. But poke holes so that the syrup has places to go. So I'll probably just like follow a line all the way around the edge. I'm doing it like one inch apart. Now let's go one inch in the center. Go around with those. This reminds me of a tray leches cake. I think we're good. It does smell amazing right now. I am kind of salivating. I really like how it pulled away from the side of the pan. So they say at first drizzle like a quarter all over the cake. Let it soak in and just keep repeating the process. This is insane, guys. More rum. Okay, Bee Tree. We're going to get the edge soaked a bit.
Will it take it all though? This is why you gotta let it sit overnight. Oh. There is no limit. The limit does not exist. Insane. No, there's still, if you look in this side, there's still some just in the bottom there, but it did like soak it up. You can tell, you can tell. Okay, I'm gonna put that aside guys and we're getting into the chicken. We're wrapping things up. We made it. Okay, into the chimkins that we butterflied up already. They're ready for the marinade. Okay, I'm just scraping down the sides. So many different smells in here. It's like onions, spices, garlic. French silk pie. I'm in. I think the rest of this will just rub inside of the Ziploc bag. And then we have more than enough marinade to cover the backside in the chicken as well. And yeah, it's not like a loose marinade. Okay, so I'm gonna gently try and pick these up and just pop them into a freezer bag. Without making it too messy. I think I got this. Yep, he got this. I would say that jerk marinade is also like one of the not so appetizing looking marinades out there. Just turn in that. I'm gonna pour a little bit of marinade on the back side of that chicken before we pile the other one on there. Okay, this is burning my hands, so I'm gonna go quick, quick. Okay, I think I can do this stack on top of there. This duck dog is, well, it's gonna get cooked on the big green egg. We're not smoking it, but it'll be cooked over charcoal tomorrow when we finish it off. So stay tuned for that. That'll be on stream as well. <laughs> Just fits in here, I think. And that's okay, I'd rather have it packed tight and have everything covered in marinade. Just a couple of weeks and this guy's gonna have a smoked goose? That's what you're doing, duck dog? Get some of that worked down in into the chicken thanks to gravity and yeah just do a nice little massage before these go into the fridge and sit overnight and then i always do like a flip over in the morning so if you put it in the fridge this way tonight in the morning just go flip it to the other side so that it marinades really evenly as well and that's it guys stream complete in oh five hours basically on the dot thank you guys for the wonderful day today we'll be live tomorrow at 11 a.m pacific as always guys i'm about to hit that button let's go spread some love on twitch and thanks for all the new follows subs biddies resubs today and raids of course see you guys tomorrow take care stay safe stay healthy bye, bye.